Hi, this is Kevin with Kevin Hale Photography. I wanted to show you what I do when I see an image that I think uh, maybe has some potential, but uh, there's some real problem areas with it. So I'm flipping through these pictures and I come across this photo of my son and in the park, and it's incredibly dark, but I know that the picture was sharp. I knew because I had plenty of depth of field. I was shooting at five hundredths of a second, and I just had a good feeling about the shot, the composition and stuff. So I looked at it and I said, well, okay, is his hand sharp? Is his face sharp? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I know that via Lightroom, I have incredible control over the uh, lighting, both when it's too bright or when it's too dark. And you have a lot of range to work with to recover images based off of light. Can't do anything about blurry photos, but you can do a lot about changing the lighting of an image and evening those types of things out. So I wanted to show you just a few of the things I would do to uh, make changes to it and see, hey, is this something I want to maybe do something with? Do I want to take this into Photoshop? Do I want to spend more time on it? And when you're flipping through hundreds of photos, you have to make these decisions pretty fast. So you need really powerful tools to be able to, to determine quickly if this is something that's worth your time. So I'm going to very quickly start by just blasting with light. I'm going to go over to the exposure. And, uh, and bear in mind that I'm keeping an eye on the histogram up on the top as I do this because I want to make sure that I'm not clipping too much out and I'll show you clipping in a second so first thing is I'm just gonna go all the way and I'm gonna kinda of dial it back I'm focusing on Colin's skin I want to make sure that I see enough detail in his skin I really don't care about the sky because I can do things about that later on the subject is what I'm worried about so uh, that's kinda of bright but I'm gonna pull that back a little bit maybe like right there we turn on the clipping warning this right here, everything you see that's red, it's telling you you've lost detail. You've exceeded the ability to um, to show detail with that. So I was I like what I see, but um, I want to go ahead and bring back some detail in, in con. So I'm going to go ahead and do the recovery tool at this point, and you can see that now I'm kind of bringing it back. So I've got pretty good exposure, but I've recovered by bringing back the uh, the brightest value of the photo into you know what the the image can actually render and so now um, I see this image of Colin here I feel like okay I got that under control I've wrangled that pretty good there's not really much it's too dark at this point so I'm going to go ahead and turn the clipping warning off and uh, what I then I like to do is is maybe just bring up a little bit of clarity here which is like mid-tone boost and this is a, almost like sharpening and so I want to show you when I go all the way with it you can see that now his hair is really dark up top and there's a lot of gradation. Uh, it's gonna, you know, be really dark. It's kind of contrasty. If I go all the way this way, it just looks weird, like a weird glamour shot kind of thing. So uh, typically, you just kind of start easing on into it, come up to maybe around 50 or so, and uh, maybe, yeah, I like how that looks. So the next thing I'll do is I might add a little bit more contrast in, and contrast has the effect of kind of like on the farther end of the scale of creating. Um, the contrast between the darks and the and the brights in the bright bright parts of the image, and it also has a tendency to to make colors pop out a little bit more. So I really like the effect. It will tend to isolate the subject and start to make uh, the subject stand out from the rest of the background. So when I do this contrast, I can see that I'm really getting a lot of the shadowing on the de uh, loss of detail here on the shirt, and uh, I want to go ahead and bring up a little bit of fill light. And the fill light does the opposite of recovery. It actually works on this end of the histogram. So by bringing that fill light up, oh, that's way too much. I'm just going to bring it a little bit does the trick, maybe like right there. Okay, so I'm looking at this photo, and I'm, I'm not, I like what I'm seeing with the, the, val the uh, brightness values of it, but I'm not liking what I'm seeing with the color. I feel like Colin is, has really been washed out in this. So let me mess with a couple things that have to do with color. We got vibrance and I have saturation. So I'm going to work on this vibrance a second and see if that has any effect. If I go all the way to the right, now he's got this kind of like makeup thing going and I definitely don't want my son wearing makeup. So I'm going to bring that back down and I'm just really not feeling like vibrance is doing a whole lot. Overall, I feel like the entire image has a feel of it being too cool, uh, meaning that the color temperature is it's too uh, too high on the color temperature scale it's heading towards that bluish light so I should go back and work on temperature which is actually something I would probably do 
pretty quickly on um, in, a, in the editing of an image anyway. So let's just see what happens if I do that. Start bringing that up. Oh, now, now this is starting to look pretty good because um, I have made his skin look like skin. It's got a nice healthy glow to it and we all look better when our skin is a little bit more warm and so by bringing that up now we're starting to see a very promising image and so uh, you know saturation let me show you what that looks like if you go all the way off now you've got a black and white image if you go all the way that way it just looks uh, too cartoonish so I typically don't even use saturation I usually use vibrance and kind of work the combination of vibrance and then I get into more specific tone um, color tones down here in the hue saturation and um, you can get into these you get in here into hue saturation and luminance and work on individual channels and I won't do that on this video but so what you can see without uh, doing much to the image at all now we've gone from this image what it was originally look how bad that looked we've just gotten used to it and now you have that image and so you're adding these changes layer by layer and you don't even realize how much it adds up. That's why a little bit goes a long way. You, we have a tendency to be too heavy handed when we're initially making edits. And what you really want to do and the better you get at editing images, you learn that um, it's all the little small changes that you make to an image that start to aggregate into a really great edit. And so again, that's what it was before, that's what it is now before and after. Now I'm looking at this and I'm going, wow, this picture has a great expression. It's framed pretty well. There's some things that I want to do. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm undecided on the bruising here. You know, his nails look a little funky. But, uh, you know, maybe if I uh, get in there, I might want to do a little bit of healing brush and things like that. Um, and this image could be really powerful and also you know I want to sharpen the overall image up on the hair and that kind of thing and I want to crop out uh, a lot of this white space so there are some things that I think I would probably want to go ahead and do to this image and uh, the the power of the basic panel and the develop module has uh, enabled me to spend what would have probably taken me actually about a minute and now I can uh, decide that I want to go ahead and do that a little further. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section. And I thank you for taking the time to look at this video.